Jack Hammond is at the store where he buys a few things and steals a candy bar. At the counter the storekeeper delayed giving him his change till the cops came to the store to buy things too. Just as the cops were about to pay for what they got, a voice from their walkie-talkie announced to them a gray car that was driven by a suspect. Welcome to Popcorn Movie Recaps, spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The cops questioned Jack and at this time he was not comfortable where he was standing. Things were getting intense when Jack threw his cash and grabbed Natalie Voss as a hostage who was close to him using the biscuit he stole as a weapon. The cops tried to make him let her go but he wouldn't, and went on to tell the storekeeper to collect the police guns and hand them over to him which he did. Jack escaped successfully by doing this with Natalie as his hostage. A TV presenter is in a police car as they film crimes the cops see daily. While this was on, they were given a mission to chase Jack who had hijacked Natalie's car which they set into action immediately. As the next scene unfolds, we see Natalie pleading with Jack to let her go and he should take the car with him if that's what it takes for her to gain her freedom. As these pleads fell on deaf ears who wanted to use her to escape, Natalie removed a hot button from her car and pressed it on Jack's neck which made him almost lose control of the car where she was seen by the police who chased after them and called for backup. Jack managed to get the hot button off his neck which fell on his private area and burnt him. The cops saw the smoke that emerged from the car and were desperate to catch up so he didn't harm Natalie. Office Dobbs and Officer Figgis were still in pursuit when the presenter asked Dobbs what he liked about his job, to which he responded by saying he loved the power, how people fear the cops, and how it makes him feel like a star. Moving on, Natalie felt carsick and threw up which disturbed the vision of the cops for a while. Figgis noticed that the backups he requested were not sent, and made a complaint which was addressed to the Chief Boyle. Boyle was told that it was Natalie Voss the daughter of Dalton Voss a well-known citizen whose daughter was in hostage. Without wasting time he swung into action which made more police join in as they chased after Jack. The hot chase continued when Jack decided to go to Mexico, which Natalie was not happy about, but she couldn't do anything about it. They entered the highway which was difficult for the cops to catch up with them. Jack was seen causing a lot of damage which another TV presenter was recording live from a helicopter. As the reel turns, we see Jack trying to be a nice kidnapper to Natalie and asking for her name which she refuses to tell him because she thinks he is a terrorist, and she hates guns. After he kept the gun, she told him her name. It was at this point Jack found out that he had kidnapped the daughter of a millionaire and people would think he did it for money. The news channel also reported this on the news which Boyle was watching when Dalton Voss came into the police station which made Boyle sweat because Dalton was not happy that his daughter was helped captured and he was been told that she was safe. Natalie was making the situation worse for Jack so that he would let him go, but Jack was encouraging himself not to panic. Chief Boyle took Dalton Voss to the CCTV footage of what happened at the store, this was how they found out that Jack was a criminal who robbed a bank and escaped while he was transferred to another prison. This upset Dalton and told Boyle that no strand of hair on his daughter's head should get hurt. Next we discover that Figgis and another cop planned on taking Jack from the sides which they almost accomplished when Jack shot the car tire causing it to tumble and hit another bus which also flipped. All this was caught on camera by Byron who relayed it to the news media. Jack apologized for what he did saying it was not intentional, but Natalie believed that shooting someone's tires was a deliberate action. Their discussion was cut short when Boyle called Natalie's phone which Jack answered. Boyle was trying to make Jack drop off Natalie so she wouldn't get hurt when angry Dalton collected the phone and tried using money to win him over which did not work. Jack stood up for Natalie and later hung up the phone when her father started blaming her for not staying at home which shocked her. After the call ended, Natalie told Jack that no one had ever talked to her dad like that when he told her that her father took her like a baby that's why she can't talk to him. She also told him how she hated her stepmother who married her father because of his money and wanted to control everyone but couldn't control her. Back at the police station, Natalie's mom came in and asked for her daughter of which she was told how she was doing. Yvonne was not happy to see her, which almost led to an argument when Bollier received a call from Jack's attorney who told him he could speak to Jack and he would listen. Other news channels were also broadcasting this incident as they wanted to know if she was tied up or restrained. Jack turned on the radio and heard that they were on the radio but turned the channel to another station as they both vibed to the music. Their moment was interrupted when Ari Josephson called Jack telling him to let Natalie go and surrender to the cops which he was not willing to do. Figgis was saying how he won't let any of his children join the police when the camera pans to Jack and Natalie who received a call from Jerry asking him what he would do when the car runs out of gas. Jack was pissed by this question and ripped off the phone which Natalie seemed to like. Looks like she was getting fond of him. In the next scene, we some Dale and his friend join in the pursuit, probably to help the cops. In the following act, we see the police and the SW8 team at the border of Mexico as they get ready for Jack so they can stop him. 
Back to Jack who was not aware of what was ahead of him was still driving towards Mexico when Natalie asked him why he was on the run. Jack started by telling her how some people were robbing a bank in clown clothing and how he would perform at a kid's birthday as a clown. Due to the robbery incident, the police came and searched his house and found the customer he used which was how he was caught for a crime he did not commit. Natalie was picturing Jack in a clown costume when the undercover agents tried to hit them from the side which they failed and caused terrible traffic on the freeway. We also see that another news media went to Josephson and questioned him concerning Jack who was not guilty of the crime charged. As we go deeper into our story, we see that Natalie has studied Jack and found out he was not ready to give up on what he had planned which was to escape instead of spending his youthful age in prison. Just as Natalie held Jack's hands, their moment got interrupted by Jerry who was on one side of the van to capture if Natalie was okay, but failed when Jack showed them a middle finger and their camera fell off when they tried dodging a car in their path. We soon discover that Natalie was getting comfortable with Jack and asked him about his girlfriend which he doesn't have. It was at this point he told her what he used to kidnap her which happened to be a candy bar. She collected it from him, ate out of it, and also fed him laughing that her dad did not know he kidnapped her with a candy bar. Dale and his friend were arrested for causing havoc on the road while another news media was saying Natalie was in real danger and fear. But when the reel turned to Natalie and Jack, we saw that she was helping Jack with the wound she gave him at first, seems they were getting along. After a few conversations about his marital status and what would happen to him if his plans didn't work out, she leaned so close and kissed him saying she was falling in love with him. Jack could not resist because this could be his last moment, which he embraced as they both made love in the car while he was driving. The chase lasted till night, when Natalie suggested that they collect some money from her father and run away. Jack did not like the idea, but Natalie was sure that they won't get caught. Just as they were about to arrive at the Mexico border, all the police got themselves in position waiting for them. Jack later figured out that her idea was great, but it was almost destroyed when they got to the border to see a roadblock. Natalie yelled at Jack who was out of options to do something which he did by turning back. He found another route which he followed but the cops were not ready to back down or give up. It appeared that Jack was playing with the police because he was just going around a circle as they chased after him. As the reel turns we see Jack and Natalie planning their escape which she was excited about. Not long after this, Jack stopped the car and was surrounded by the police. Natalie was shocked as to why he was doing this, Jack told her that his intentions were not to have her damage her life just because of him. She tried to make him see how innocent he was, but Jack was not ready to do this, and harm her. Amidst tears, Natalie got out of the car and watched Jack light a cigarette as he remembered everything he had done till the very moment. He also thought of playing the cops but killed the idea and surrendered. After handcuffing him, Dalton came and slapped the hell out of him because he said she was beautiful. Natalie was not happy about this and took one of the TV presenters who was with Dobbs and Figus saying they should uncuff Jack immediately. Dalton and the police told her that Jack had gotten into her head, but she shot at her dad's helicopter showing them she meant business. Figgis wasted not even a second and uncuffed him as they both went to the helicopter Byron was using to film, and escaped with the whole police and her father watching but could do nothing about it. That's it for now folks, we hope you enjoyed this recap. Stay tuned for more by hitting the subscribe button.